Good morning. Hello, mouse hunt. Welcome. Feedback Friday. Today, what is the date today? My computer will tell me it's December 16th. Good morning, good afternoon, or just good day, everyone in the chat. Hello, hello to you, Ryan, Eugene, KDM. Hello in the chat. Hello, good morning to you as well. Uh, today is good midnight. All right, Daniel, good midnight to you in the various time zones across the world. Well, today, a bit more of a laid back feedback Friday, and we're going to talk all about the great winter hunt. I uh, have a quick little announcement, but then after that, not too much on the go, but I want to get all uh, uh, hunters' thoughts and feedback over the great winter hunt so far from the chat. Uh, questions, we can clear up confusion, anything like that. Uh, that, also, that also is a good sort of source for us to know maybe what we can post on the Facebook wall page. If uh, there's confusing aspects, we can kind of clarify some things there, give some hints, tips, or maybe a news tickers as well. Uh, so first, a quick announcement that uh, we are working, or a quick little behind the scenes, what are we working on? That's usually what I like to start Feedback Friday with is, what are we all working on here in the office? And as a little New Year's add-on for the Great Winter Hunt, uh, as hunters I'm sure are aware are, there is a New Year's mouse and the Party Head mouse, or two event mice that only come around during New Year's. Although I think the Party Head mouse, we do work that into Lunar New Year sometimes as well. I could be mistaken, or maybe that's the New Year's mouse. Anyway, two, new, two event mice that come around during New Year's. Uh, so we do like to do a little bit of an add-on to the Great Winter Hunt to uh, let hunters be able to capture those two event mice this year as well. If we have time, we're planning on adding one more New Year's event mouse as well. That's sort of the last thing the artists have on their plate is to draw a new mouse. Uh, a few new limited edition rewards to earn as well, uh, but a little too early to give a sneak peek. Maybe next Friday, assuming uh, Feedback Friday. Actually, Jacob's off next Friday, so it will likely be me then. Uh, we'll do a little sneak peek, and I think there'll be some more of the assets will be ready, some more of the images for some of that artwork, so it'll be a little more exciting. And Derek in the chat, as well as pointing out 2017 charms. Yes, of course, that's kind of a tradition that we're continuing. It'll be your opportunity to earn 2017 charms with 2017 power, one better than last year's charms, which is quite a bit of power for a charm. They're probably some of the most powerful charms that uh, you can loot on a regular basis, but you'll be able to earn those during the New Year's add-on for the Great Winter Hunt. Julia's excited with an E New Year's add-on. You guys are the best, the best? And Eugene just got his first imposter mouse. Congratulations. I think I, I, I'm flying again. I'm on my second flight, personally. I had a little bit of trouble finding, I think, toys. I was having some trouble finding a toy. I stocked up on Asiago, skipped a couple little uh, wastelands, and found my way eventually. But then I need to stock up on some Asiago before I took flight to make sure I could use it the whole time. So, with that, Quick announcement or behind the scenes look at what we're working on. I'll kind of open it up to the chat. I want to know hunters' feedback, their first impressions of the great winter hunt. Definitely any questions about how things work, any uh, confusions or clarifications in, in the gameplay. And like I said, that's kind of good. I'm going to take some notes as we go here and uh, I can put that in my summary yeah, for Feedback Friday today as well as maybe uh, Facebook wall posts and things like that. I can kind of help get the word out. But there's no better way to know what we need to get the word out about than asking hunters. How does Larry have so many traps? So if someone didn't notice that little joke, I think it was in the news post, we said Larry was handing out all these temporal turbine-powered sleighs. And uh, so we gave Larry, well, actually, Larry, we didn't give them to. He procured somehow, he has 200,000 temporal turbines. So he's been constructing these sleighs, I guess, doing the work of an elf, I suppose. Um, so what else? Ryan's saying toys are a little, wait, I lost track of where I was looking there. Ryan said toys are a little frustrating, but good otherwise. Uh, that was something we played around with quite a bit during playtesting. We went through a few different versions of the event. Uh, we had one where it was purely random on what orders you would receive, uh, but sometimes you'd get like maybe three toy blocks or three deluxe sl sleds, sleds you collect. And uh, that was a little bit frustrating if you couldn't find that zone. Uh, we tried another version where you'd always have one of the ski uh, skiing items, one of the toy items, and one of the decoration items. But then that was a little bit too easy. We found we just never really even used nitro or anchors. It wasn't really as fun or rewarding because when you did, all the zones were good. So it, there weren't those highs and lows. You didn't get excited when you found a good one. Uh, so we ended up on, you can get 
maximum of two of the same item. So you can have two blocks, but you'll never have three blocks at the same time. Uh, but you can get two blocks in one top, so you'll still really need toys, but you won't necessarily have to find a toy emporium to finish up the block order. Um, Ari in the chat there is saying you need three deluxe sled orders. That should be impossible. As I just said, you might need two sleds and one ski, so you'll be really excited to find one of the snowy mountains or a little excited to see one of the bunny hills where you can get skis, but the sleds are rare. Uh, the anchor charms are hard to get. You do get some in the air. There was a comment from the chat there. Uh, you do get them while you're flying through the air, the snowball showdown as well. You can earn festive anchoring charms. And remember also that regular anchor charms work as well. The snowflake mouse drops festive anchor charms. I think the snowflake mouse also has a chance to drop scrap metal and flawed orbs, and you can craft more anchor charms. So you can use any anchor charm. It doesn't have to be a festive one. Uh, that said, the festive one does... Uh, track the snowflake mouse, so you'll get toys a little faster using that one, but you'll still slow down your uh, sleigh using a regular charm. The only anchoring charm that doesn't work is the ultimate anchoring charm, because uh, one, it only works in the Sunken City, doesn't even work in Balak's Cove, and uh, it would also be a horrible idea to use one of those charms during the event, so it's best that it just doesn't work. Should have maybe grabbed someone else to accommodate me today because I'll be taking a little more notes than usual. So forgive the silent gaps here as I take notes from the chat. <laughs> Axel in the chat saying, I, I can't wait to dismantle the sleigh after the event. Sorry, there was a little asterisk in the news post. You can't dismantle the sleigh. I wish. That was, that was a bit of our joke for having it powered by a temporal turbine. The nitro is hard to get. Uh, the, the mice will drop them. The, the snowflake mouse drops nitro. The hoarder, does the hoarder mouse actually here? I'm going to open up the masterful spreadsheet that has the whole event in there so that I do not misspeak. And item drops. All right, nitro. Yes, the hoarder mouse will always drop nitro. Uh, so if you're not, if you're hunting with regular cheese, you can attract a bunch of mice that all drop Asiago. The best one being the hoarder mouse because the hoarder mouse will drop five Asiago every single time you capture the hoarder, and the and will drop one nitro every sing, single time you capture the hoarder mouse. Then while you're hunting with Asiago in some of the, the the good zones, if I can call them that, you'll find the mistletoe mouse, the sleigh ride mouse and the Nitro Racer Mouse, and they all have a bit of a Rocket or Nitro theme to them. They will also drop one to three Nitro every time you capture them. And finally, the Snowflake Mouse will drop two Nitro every single time you capture the Snowflake Mouse. So that's where you can get Nitro from. Of course, there is the Snowball Showdown as well. And I'm gonna write down some more notes here. I'm trying to keep track of the questions being answered so I can post a summary. chat again. A lot of windows going on here, a lot of windows. Um, oh yeah, and uh, that's a good point as well. Today's gift of the day is throwable snowballs. So that's a great time to stock up. You can have your friends send you throwable snowballs and uh, you can earn nitro from throwable snowballs. There's also treasure maps as well. If you do treasure maps, you will find, to or not, I almost called it toboggan nitro, it's sleigh nitro now. Powering your sleigh, you can find uh, nitro by doing treasure maps. Treasure maps are also the only other way of finding advent chocolate. So if you're looking to collect every single skin after you spent the 24 you get from your advent calendar, you can do treasure maps to earn some more. I believe if you dust, if you dust a naughty map, or naughty list, uh, you are you're guaranteed one or two advent chocolates, whereas otherwise it's a chance to find one, but I think dusting it will always guarantee an advent chocolate. The nice lists, I think you'll get one, and the naughty, I think there's a chance to find two. Oh, Nigel pointed out as well, the tur tournaments went live, and that is another way to get advent chocolates as well.
Uh, are the maps worth dusting from the chat there? Uh, kind of up to you. Obviously, the, the main thing the dust does is guarantees that you will find an advent chocolate. Those are kind of hard to come by and certainly valuable. Uh, other than that, it doubles the points, the gold, the ancient charms, and it will increase the amount of nitro, festive anchoring charms. Uh, I think just about double them, I think. Actually, here. Well, that's why I opened up this spreadsheet with, with everything in there. What do we have for maps? Let's find the naughty and nice lists. This is a big spreadsheet. There we go. The naughty list has 45,000 gold, and it doubles to 90,000. The anchoring or the ancient charms double, and normally you'd find you get three more items, either being a festive anchoring charm or Asiago. So that's four and five. Wait, four and five. It's hard to read our spreadsheet. Yeah, you will get about double the Arctic Asiago and festive anchoring charms, and the nitro is doubled as well. So you'll find ten nitro inside of a rare chest, rare naughty chest, whereas you will only find five inside of a regular. And you can purchase those lists from the cartographer at the event location. The nice lists, they're a little bit easier, have fewer mice, but fewer rewards. The naughty list, I think they'll take you to the snowball storm zones where some of the tougher mice are. Uh, but the rewards are a little bit more uh, rewarding, more rewarding rewards, I'll phrase it that way. Stuck snowball mice, are they only available at snowball storms is a question from Ryan. Uh, where do we find stuck snowball mice? I'll write that down. And yes, they are only in the snowball storms, and I believe only with Asiago as well. So you have to be hunting with Asiago while you go through a snowball storm. And that's a great place to stock up on throwable snowballs if, uh, if you're interested in playing the snowball showdown. Every single mouse will drop one. Uh, when you capture a mouse in the snowball uh, storm, you'll get at least one snowball per hunt. And when you find that stuck snowball mouse, I think they drop five, so that's, you know, get a nice little juicy drop of stuck snowballs. Uh, why was the temporal turbine chosen instead of traps like the school of sharks? I might need you to clarify that question, I assume, for the theme of how you're pulling the sleigh. That does kind of sound humorous as well if, if uh, you had nine sharks ahead of you in your sleigh rather than a turbine engine. That could have been humorous as well, but... For whatever reason, we went with the temporal turbine engine, maybe because turbine sounds like an engine a little bit. Um, probably as well, we're a bit of Star Wars fans, and it kind of reminds us of pod racing. You know, you got those big, the temporal turbine sitting out front kind of felt like a pod racer, so maybe that's where we drew some inspiration from as well. Are the rewards between naughty and nice maps different? Another question from the chat. Well, here, we can check that out. So a regular nice chest, you will get 11,000 gold, 12,000 points, six ancient charms, uh, and then you will get festive anchoring charm or Arctic Asiago. Then you will get three nitro, and then there is a chance, a 20% chance of finding an advent chocolate inside of a nice chest. Whereas when you go to the naughty lists, with the more difficult mice, it's 45,000 gold, 30,000 points, seven ancient charms, and then you get festive... Festive Anchoring Charm or Arctic Asiago Cheese kind of doubled up. Uh, so you'll get about double as, as, uh, as much of those items. Five Nitro and then, yes, a chance to get an Advent Chocolate as well. However, when you dust it, then it guarantees you will find an Advent Chocolate. And actually on the rare Naughty Chest, it guarantees that you will find two Advent Chocolates if you dust it. So you'll get two per map on the rare chest. Sharks with lasers, like the reindeer with the nose, that would be awesome. That's, a, that's an interesting suggestion there from the chat. That would have been funny as well, where Rudolph at the front was the shark with the laser on its head, and that's, you know, shines, shines so bright. Can we get a bigger boost while using 3 Nitro? Uh, well, you get 500 meter boost when you use 3 Nitro, so you go twice as far in half the number of hunts, which is still it's pretty powerful for using uh, three nitro. That said, if you're running a little low on nitro, you may want to just use the turbo, I think is what we call it, where you use one nitro and you go 250 meters per hunt. That's certainly fast enough to help you find the zone you want to go to without burning through too much nitro. Uh, but from strategy-wise, it's up to hunter to decide whether their time is more valuable to them or their nitro. So when you're low on nitro, 
you probably want to use turbo, but if you have lots of nitro, you, then you can save time by using more of it per hunt. Will we ever see the clockapult of winter past blueprint again with a question? I'll have to maybe get back to you on that one, but I'll write that down. Clockapult of winter past. Interesting to spell clockapult. It's boost, not turbo. Thank you for correcting me. I guess I could also have mouse hunt open. I'll probably sound my horn right now. No, I cannot. I went on a hunt with Francisco. And I got the imposter mouse, and he dropped three Super Bria Kings credit and a festive ultimate luck churn. That was a good catch. Yes, normal boost and turbo. Passing parcels. How do we get passing parcels is another question. Where do we... And the answer is you find passing parcels while you're flying. Somewhat of an uncommon drop, I believe the Joy Mouse and the Imposter have a chance of dropping a passing parcel. Uh, they're a little uncommon, however, as the event goes on, because it's a little tricky to open them up. Because when you open it up, if you don't find the item, you find another smaller parcel inside and you have to pass it along to a friend uh, to have them try to open it. And the chance of finding something is less than 50%. So as the, as the event goes on, slowly the number of passing parcels will kind of increase depending on how fast hunters are sending them back and forth. Uh, so, and then when the event ends, I imagine they'll slowly drain out a little bit. So um, you'll definitely you'll get some as loot drops or some from friends as well. Ask your friends if they found a passing parcel and tried to open it. They may have found another passing parcel inside and then uh, they have to send it to a friend. Are skins like the Wreath and the, and the Santa School of Sharks donation only this great winter hunt? I believe all the skins should be in the shop. Let's go double check. But all the skins you should be able to purchase either with Advent Chocolates or with cash. Where are the trap? Where are the Trapsmith? Where is the Trapsmith? There's the Trapsmith. So skins. We're looking for a school of sharks. I don't see one. All right, so I'll check up on that. It's possible that some are missing from the Trapsmith, so we'll check that out. Spooky sand castle. If uh, there's a comment from the chat, if you did see the image of the spooky sand castle as sort of the header illustration across the top or the thumbnail, uh, clear your browser cache. We did try to do a cache buster as well on that. There was a period of time where it was cached incorrectly, um, sort of from a technical <clears throat> aspect. We have a server that hosts all of the images and they all come from there uh, called a CDN and it got cached in the CDN as the Halloween image. Uh, but we cleared out that cache and forced everyone to re-download the image. But if you're still having a problem with that, uh, then clear your browser cache, reload the page, and you should now see something much more festive. Any mega attorneys this year is a question from Sally. We will likely do one for New Year's is the current plan, if hunters are excited about that. Not browser mobile app. That as well is a little tricky. Um, you may have to reinstall the app to clear your cache as far as the app goes, but we'll see what we can do. I'll write down something. We should be able to do something from our end to basically force your app. Some of those images come down from the internet in the app. And we, we should be able to do something to basically force the app to say, oh, look, the image is different. I'm going to download the new copy of it. But if you're looking to clear your cache in your browser, it kind of varies from browser to browser. If you, if you Google the name of your browser, clear cache, uh, you're very likely to find some instructions on, on how to do so. But like I said, I'll, I'll write down a note here because there is something we can do from our end to tell... Um, Everyone playing basically, the, the, tell their browser, please re-download this image. It's a new version. Uh, 
Uh, KDM asks, in the HUD, why do we stay at zero meters of the previous zone instead of 250 of the next zone? Uh, just the way the event works. So at some point, you you know, when you're right at the beginning or the end of the zone, um, when you when you when you come to the end of it, you're you're at zero meters. Uh, it's just kind of like the greater than, less than. It'll either happen right at the start of the zone or at the end of the zone. So that's just kind of where it happens with it. But uh, nevertheless, at a 250 zone and going 30 per hunt, you will get eight hunts inside that zone. Does using a boost in the sleigh alter the mouse population at all? No, it does not. Just, just your speed, but you'll attract all the same mice. Some clarification in the chat, the ultimate anchoring charm will not work for the event. Uh, it says right in its description, it only works while exploring the sunken city. So that's the only place you can use an ultimate anchoring charm. You can't use it in uh, the tribal isles, Bellocks Cove, and uh, it won't work in the event either. And that said, even if they did, it's probably a bad idea. It's a pretty expensive piece of equipment to capture maybe a, a toy mouse worth a thousand points or something like that uh, using your charm that's worth a million gold. So. Is a sleigh race never-ending race with no finish line? It's not really a race, it's a, it's a sled pull. So we're just having fun flying through the snow, collecting gifts, taking flight, and spreading holiday cheer. Uh, there is no finish line, it'll just keep going and going and going. Uh, that said, you can kind of see how far you traveled in the air on the HUD at all times. There's a scoreboard for that as well, so it's kind of interesting to see just how long of a flight hunters can do. What does the winter charm do is a question from the chat. It attracts the snowflake mouse who drops um, more loot depending on where you capture the snowflake mouse. Uh, it, <clears throat> I'm trying to think here what the names of the zones are. So if you're in a toy emporium, for example, when you capture the snowflake mouse, uh, it'll have a chance of dropping blocks and tops. Blocks and tops. Uh, if you're in a toy lot, though, it'll just drop... What does it? Let's double check. Let's double check. Let's double check those loot drops. Actually, you know what? I don't think that one is in this spreadsheet because they the snowflake mouse drops work a little extra fancy. Official terminology there. This the drops are extra fancy. I'm gonna have a hard time finding actually the task there where that's written down. But the snowflake mouse will drop loot based on the area that you uh, capture it in if you capture it in a winter wasteland. I think it drops the three simple uh, I gift items. If you capture it while flying as well, it'll drop the simple gift items. Uh, so it's the only way actually to capture or collect more toys while you're flying in the air is by capturing snowflake mice as you fly through the air. So if you're on winter charms during the air, that's kind of a, a neat benefit. And the festive anchoring charms will slow you down and attract the snowflake mouse. So you just get more loot per hunt. Basically, you get more loot drops. If you arm a winter charm while you're flying, it will not lower the chance of encountering the winter hunt imposter. Instead, it replaces, I think it's the, uh, the present and the gingerbread mouse. Their encounter rate goes down and the snowflake mouse comes in uh, replacing those mice. So you and the present and the gingerbread mouse, they don't drop particularly great loot while you're flying. Uh, so it's kind of nice that they get replaced with a snowflake who's going to drop much more useful loot as well. Does the snowflake charm do anything? I think maybe you mean the snowball charm. The snowball charm, actually that's good. I'll make sure to write that down. Uh, what do snowball charms do? Snowball charms will give uh, any festive trap in the game a 20% power bonus when you uh, equip them with. Now previously it only worked with the, I believe it's called the snowball gatler and the ice Blaster, no, the Ice Blast. I'm sure someone in the chat's gonna have that piece of trivia. It's two limited edition traps that look like a big giant snow cannon that pelt the mouse with snowballs. Previously, the Snowball Charm would give a 20% power bonus to those two limited edition traps. This year, it's been updated. It works with any sort of festive or Christmas themed trap at all. Um, now, that doesn't include skin, so the trap itself has to be of that theme. Uh, so if you think back, like the um, well, certainly the two new traps you're in this year, it'll work with those two traps. 
or the double diamond adventure trap, I think is a tobogganing themed one. It'll work with that trap now. So any sort of festive themed trap, you get 20% power bonus, which is pretty huge power bonus as well. The snow barrage, yes, it'll work with the snow barrage if you happen to have that trap. Is there any way to get winter charms besides trading it in with Asiago? That's the most reliable way to stock up on winter charms. And uh, you can kind of convert your cheese into winter charms. And as you hunt with the winter charms, you'll get snowflake mice who drop festive anchoring charms and nitro. And so you can kind of slowly convert your Asiago up and up and up into better and better resources. Uh, that said, you can also find them in your daily reward chests. Uh, they will appear as a gift of the day, which actually I should mention some changes to the gift of the day next. Uh, playing the showball snowdown is another way to find winter charms as well. I'll get to the gifting stuff in a minute. Gifting updates. Because another good question here about non Asiago festive cheeses. So the you can use any sort of festive themed cheese to cat to attract mice in the area that drop the gift items. However, Arctic Asiago is the best cheese. It has a 100% attraction rate, or close to it. The other cheese will attract anywhere. I think gingerbread's about on par with Swiss in terms of attraction rate. And I think nutmeg is maybe the best. It's kind of like Gouda. Um, now, on top of that as well, you will get better mice as well using your Arctic Asiago. I think there are three mice that you can only attract while you use Arctic Asiago. So that is the mistletoe, the sleigh ride, and the Nitro Racer. If you do not use Arctic Asiago, you will never attract those mice, and those mice drop Nitro, and they always drop gift items as well. So the number of gift items per hunt that you're finding as loot goes way up using Arctic Asiago. Uh, so definitely when you're in a good zone, you wanna make sure to use Arctic Asiago. Can we use Asiago in place of SB plus in other areas? I'll have to just double check to make sure how that works. Oh no. I just realized my computer may not be set up in the best way right now. Let's see. Bait. Arctic Asiago. No, it will not. So the festive cheeses will only work in the event area if you try to hunt with those cheese or those types of cheese, or I'll just say cheeses. I don't like the word cheeses, but apparently it's a word. If you hunt with those cheeses outside the event area, uh, they will just fail to attract constantly. They do not, um, they don't count as sort of a standard or regular bait like Gouda or Swiss. What about festive feta? Uh, festive feta, yeah, let's, let's just double check. We can kind of see what the hierarchy of those festive cheeses are. Cheeses. Um, bait. There's Arctic Asiago, which is a little tricky to find here. Festive feta. So festive feta is kind of like Gouda in terms of attraction, right? The nutmeg cheese. Ooh, nutmeg cheese is unlike any other cheese. It's, it's better than Gouda. I believe gingerbread is the worst. It is like brie, so it's better than Swiss. And snowball bocaccini, I believe, is the other one. Snowball bocaccini is like Gouda as well. So in terms of sort of the hierarchy of cheese, uh, gingerbread's at the bottom, nutmeg's kind of up there, the others are in the middle, and then Arctic Asiago is the very best. As well as remember, Arctic Asiago not only does it have a better attraction rate, so you'll fail to attract less often, or pretty well never, um, you'll also get better mice when you use that, so you'll just get way more loot. You'll have fewer wasted hunts. How to catch greedy owls is a question as well. Let's find where greedy owl's hiding this year. Where are you, greedy owl? Off the top of my head, I'm gonna guess, no. No, it's not there. I was wrong, I was gonna guess the snowball storm, but greedy owl. All right. Greedy owl is a cheese collecting mouse. So if you hunt with any sort of standard cheese, Super Brie, Gouda, etc. You'll uh, encounter mice who drop Arctic Asiago. Greedy Al is one of those mice. So when you capture Greedy Al, he will drop Arctic Asiago. 
I'll mention as well, if you're looking to collect our Arctic Asiago the fastest, there's a bit of a cheese hierarchy there as well. I'll see Super Breeze is going to be the best. It attracts the Hoarder Mouse the most often. The Hoarder Mouse drops uh, five Arctic Asiago every single time you capture it. Uh, then Gouda will be next. Uh, you'll uh, fail to attract uh, occasionally, obviously using Gouda, but you also you'll get the Hoarder Mouse a little more often. And then Bree and Down, you'll attract the Hoarder Mouse less often using uh, those cheeses. Uh, using Brie, you'll attract slightly easier to capture mice though, so it's something interesting for a lower level player if you don't have the best traps. If you arm Brie, I believe the Miser, the Scrooge, and Greedy Owl become a little more rare, and the Triple Lutz, Gingerbread, and Confused Courier Mouse become more abundant, so that you'll capture more mice as a whole. However, those three hard to capture mice that come around with Gouda and Super Brie more often, they also drop Asiago more, so um, it's a bit of a trade-off there. Does the winter does the orange winter hunt gift box give additional item if opened after the event? No, they're the same. Uh, we did update the contents of that item this year, though. So if you opened one before the event started, it would have different odds and different uh, items than if you waited till the event start. But that said, now. Um, you can open them whenever you want. They'll have the same stuff in them uh, until next Great Winter Hunt. If we reuse the orange boxes again, we might update the contents of the things you can find within. Ryan is finding it hard to attract the stuck snowball mouse. Let's see. Let's see uh, where that's at in the snowball storm. Oh, you know what? I don't have that here. I don't have that handy. Or do I? No. Oh, okay. It's a it's around twelve percent chance. So one in ten hunts. So two hundred fifty meters, and let's say you anchor in the snowball storm. You're going ten per hunt. You have twenty five hunts inside of a even a small little snowball storm. Um, so you know you should capture three. So it'd be if you anchor a snowball storm, it, you'd be very unlucky not to capture at least one of them. What's in the reindeer crate? I'm gonna save that as a surprise. Whoever gets out past 130 meters, I uh, can start popping open those crates and see what's inside. It's just, it's a few items, but they're pretty good items. Uh, it's super brief, festive, ultimate luck charms. There's a few other little odds and ends. Uh, there's, there's nothing insane in there. You're not gonna find temporal turbines or sandblasted metal or anything like that. It's all consumable items, cheese, crafting items, charms, things like that, things you use while you hunt. When will the event end? That's a good question as well. It will go into the new year. Obviously, we're going to have a bit of a New Year's tie-in and add-on to the event. Uh, so it should end in the beginning of January. We haven't quite nailed down the date exactly. Some of it depends on as we play test this New Year's add-on. We're kind of seeing, uh, you know, how many, how much collection is going on during that add-on to sort of decide well what's a good time frame, how much time do hunters need to complete that. Uh, that said, look at a quick calendar here. Can give some rough donations. New Year's Day is on a Sunday. So I think it would not end any sooner than the third, but I think we would probably have things going longer than that. But uh, I would say at the very earliest, the event would end on January 3rd. So which finally brings us to gifting updates as well. That was a question in the chat probably a good 10 minutes ago, and I wanted to get to... Uh, some of the updates we did to gifting based on feedback we got last Feedback Friday. And it has to do with specifically the gift of the day. So these are the free gifts that you can send to friends. And depending on how you have your King's Calibrator upgraded, I think it's 10 to 15 is the limit. Uh, the gift of the day now expires after a day and a half. Uh, so you can send out your 10 or your 15. And um, you can claim them each day. You can claim, I think, 10 or 15 as well. Uh, but they used to expire after seven days. However, we've increased how uh, useful the items are that appear as gift of the day, but they expire a little quicker. So before we tried to achieve the same effect by basically making it so every week there was one good thing and all the other days it'd be collectibles that would just stack up in your inventory and hunters weren't finding those too exciting. So instead we make them, we made them expire sooner, but almost every day is not, it's no longer a collectible. So you'll find Arctic Asiago, Winter Charms, the Robo Snowballs, uh, I think Festive Anchoring Charms can show up in there as well. 
Uh, now that's it, we're, we're not 100% pleased with that system, but it was sort of the only thing that we could get ready in time for the Great Winter Hunt so that the gift of the day would not have to be a collectible 90% of the time during the event that we could give out uh, Arctic Asiago and anchoring charms, things like that. But a collectible will still show up, like I think paint can on a rope, that was yesterday. Um, whereas before, the, it would be a collectible 90, 95% of the time, pretty well every time it was a collectible, and it was very rare that you'd get a good item. Now it's the other way around. Now the collectibles, they won't really show up very much, but you can rest assured almost every day is going to be a good um, a good item that you can use. Now, now to prevent it so that if you don't have the collectibles, you can still get them. I think it is, let's, let's double check that. Oh, actually, you know what? I can't. But uh, there are certain days of the week that it's guaranteed to be a collectible just because we wanted to make sure when it's rare like that through just, you know, random random chance it could never show up. The entire event would be a little sad if you needed that collectible. But, uh, well, hopefully we'll revisit gifting as well. We'll probably have more feedback Friday and get some more feedback about how gifting would work. Uh, ideally, if you could claim your limit every day without it, the weird expiry thing, like it affects hunters in different time zones a little differently. Uh, or if somebody sends you a gift and, you know, maybe you're away on a trip or something like that or away for the weekend, you come back and you're like, oh, I wish I could have claimed that. Um, there's definitely some, some imperfections with that. Uh, and hopefully we'll have some time to focus on gifting. But uh, it's tough. We've got a lot on our plates as well. We like to work on areas as much as we can, updates, uh, bug fixes, and little quality of life improvements. But gifting is, is something like that. So hopefully we can spend some time on that. <laughs> the paint can on a rope is a Home Alone reference. Was I think there's some confusion in the chat. So if you've seen the movie Home Alone with Macaulay Culkin, I believe in the 90s it was released. Uh, he hits the, rock, or the, the burglars in the face with some paint cans on a rope. So... And for whatever reason, that's a Christmas movie. I guess it takes place during Christmas, so during that holiday season. You, you like to, to, to watch Macaulay Culkin just bash in some burglars with slapstick comedy. Uh, toxic spill, another question from the chat. No, no immediate plans for what we're going to do. We're not really happy with how the toxic spill worked out. Uh, we certainly don't want the toxic spill to be, you know, those mice to be kind of weirdly rare because there never is a toxic spill. Uh, we've we've definitely kind of thrown a lot of ideas against the wall, prototypes and things. Nothing's really stuck yet. We want to make it a permanent area so it's not something that opens and closes anymore uh, where you, you can just go to it. Uh, you can get a feeling like you completed it just like all the other areas in the game. It's a little weird where the toxic spill pops up and you feel compelled to hunt there because, well, I can't hunt here very often. I may as well go there. That proved to be not particularly exciting you feel like well I, I want to hunt somewhere else but i'm feeling forced to hunt in this time sensitive area so we want to do away with that make it a permanent area in the game you can kind of do all you want to do in that area move on and then hunt where you want to hunt rather than feeling this weird compulsion to hunt at the toxic spill smash deluxe stuff for simple stuff the the there's a uh, comment there about the great winter hunt it's, it's a little awkward, like if the exchange of those gifts is too fluid, then at that point, basically all those gift items you're collecting become the same. And then we tried it for a bit, and it's not particularly exciting because gone is the feeling of, oh, I, I need a toy emporium, I gotta find a toy emporium, I'm gonna use a nitro, and when I find it, I'm gonna anchor and make sure I get my toys. Um, that feeling's gone, and it just feels like more of a boring grind of just like, well, every hunt I'm getting toys, and all the toys are the same. Uh, so we played around a little bit with the exchange rate. At the at the end, we decided to have you be able to convert the simple ones up into deluxe. And on average, you get the simple ones a little faster than you can use them up. And so that's a bit of a check in place where over the course of one, two or three weeks, you'll eventually start to have too many simple and not enough deluxe. And it's, it's inevitable because it's weighted in that way. Now, obviously, there's going to be outliers in that as well, where some people just don't have as many simple as deluxe. Uh, but we tried to curb how many outliers there are by making the drop rate of the simple. Um, they, they drop a lot faster than you actually get orders to ship them. But then when you have those extras, you can always upgrade them into deluxe and, and keep on moving. So hopefully that makes things a little less random. Uh, kind of puts a little bit of a control or a check on how random the orders can get. Uh, but like I, like I said, if you can kind of convert any toy up, down into any other toy, 
all the all those gift items become the same at that point. And we, we played it that way, and it was intensely boring because whether you see a toy emporium or a ski hill, you're like, I don't care. I'll just exchange it for the thing I want, and away I go. So it definitely felt more exciting when you have those two orders for toys, and you haven't seen toys in a day and a half. And then ahead, you're like, there's the toy emporium. Yay, all right. And like I said, there is a check as well. You can't get three identical orders at the same time. Now you can get maybe two deluxe ornaments and one simple ornament. So you could have all ornaments, the same kind of category of item, but they won't always be three identical items. And that kind of, again, puts a little bit of a check on the randomness where you don't get completely stuck on one item that you really need. As Paul pointed in the chat, feels more like a game that way. It's, it's less of just... I'm going to put in some time, collect some items, and then cash them all out. Uh, there's a, a little bit of strategy, right? It's, it's interesting. Based on the items that you have in your inventory, you have to make choices uh, to try and get the items that you want. And so that, that's what makes it a little interesting, a little exciting. Obviously, there's, there's balance that needs to go into that to make sure it's interesting and not frustrating. And that's always the challenge, especially in a game like Mouse Hunt that relies so much on random chance and... Um, the randomness. We try to put little systems into place to curb the randomness, like in the, the sunken city where you can buy predatory processor with sand dollars. That's an example of something. Well, if you're just unlucky and you're not getting those processor drops, just keep playing the air and eventually you can just buy it with sand dollars. And that's kind of about at the rate that uh, you know we, we factor everything in. So uh, we kind of, again, with the winter hunt, have something similar in place where controlling the orders you get to make sure, okay, they're not too bad, you know, control the randomness a little bit. Uh, as well as with those loot drops of the simple and the, and the deluxe by giving you simple fast slightly faster than you can use them up It helps reduce the odds of getting completely stuck on on orders at least you know over the course of a week or two uh, It's certainly possible for a few hours or a day. You feel a little bit stuck, but there's tools to try to overcome that uh, stuckness if I can make up a word are the Winter Builder Charms required to capture Builder Mice? No, they are not. They don't have any of the previous special uh, effects that they had in previous years. Sort of all, all the rules for the old events, a lot of them are kind of thrown out if they are really special custom stuff. Uh, that said, any sort of festive charm from events past will work like a Winter Charm this year. So you can use them up, capture the Snowflake Mouse. Uh, but beyond that, they won't do anything uh, super special like they did in, in past events. Yeah, and some questions, when you wrap 10 gifts, the, the HUD will change. Uh, you don't see your gift orders anymore, and there's a big button to take flight. Uh, you, you, when you go up in the air, when you come down, you'll have the sort of same orders waiting for you. You also land exactly where you took off, so you can kind of resume where you were. You don't have to take flight right away. Like I said, you won't really see the gift orders that you have to fulfill, but you could keep hunting if you want. Maybe you need some more Arctic Asiago before you take flight. Then you could arm Super Brie, Gouda, Brie, Swiss, um, collect some more Arctic Asiago, then click the button to fly up in the air. Um, I think the HUD will warn you if you're about to take flight and you have less than 30 cheese, it's kind of a bad idea. You're probably going to run out in the air. Uh, on average, you'll fly about 30, 32 hunts. Um, but certainly some hunter, if you get lucky and you can get that imposter just you know 10 times in a row, then that's like 20 free hunts. Right, we should wrap things up. Ooh, time has flown. Already 45 minutes, which seems to be the average for a Feedback Friday these days. So uh, we'll wrap things up. And I definitely have a lot of questions I wrote down here, and I'll have to type up some responses again. And I'll post a summary in the forum, but uh, it might be a little longer than usual because I'm going to have to actually type that up, whereas normally I have it typed up ahead of time, and I make fewer notes. <laughs> Thank you, Julia, for pointing out that was an unintentional pun. I have to wrap things up. That's very thematically appropriate with the uh, Winter Hunt event. In Toy Emporium, just caught your first squeaker claws. Congrats, Ryan. Yeah, it's kind of interesting going through it. We have so many uh, great Winter Hunt mice now that it was kind of, we, we had enough to just categorize them like that. Uh, it worked out well with the, the themes of previous events where we have a lot of toy-themed mice for the toy zones. 
Uh, we certainly have a lot of sledding and winter sport themed mice to go into the ski zones. And we had a lot of sort of, you know, festive decor themed mice to go into the decoration zone. So that's kind of how we arrived at those three themes by looking at the existing mice and the themes of past events. So that was kind of neat. And time flies. There we go. I'm a pun machine. Just like taking flight in Santa's sleigh or Larry's turbine sleigh in the event. Time is flying. Trivia questions. You know, I didn't prepare a trivia question. Let's see if we can think of one on the top, off the top of my head. Well, here I have that giant spreadsheet of Great Winter Hunt. That's sure to have some trivia within. All right, so. Let's say hunt, you're hunting with gingerbread cheese and you're in a snowy mountain zone in the Great Winter Hunt. How many unique breeds of mice could you possibly encounter? Or how many mice are in the encounter pool if you want to kind of think of it that way. And while hunters are stewing on that, I'm going to have to make a reward link or I guess ask Larry for a reward link. I bet you somebody has the answer. I better tab back. Seven is correct. Yes, Jordan. Jordan is correct. That didn't take long at all. I tabbed back to the chat and seven was at the top. So Larry, I'm gonna have to ask Larry for a gift if he would be so kind. I just typed the item to give out. I started typing the word Larry. <laughs> Let's just hand out Larry's. Let's, let's go with that item, sure, that's nice. I could, I could use some of that, so. Let's give out that item. And today is the 16th. So this will expire seven days after the 16th. Boom, boom, boom. All right. Submit the form and ask Larry. See if he has enough in his stockpiles of wherever he gets all these items. It's a resourceful guy, I guess. Test out this link. It works. All right. Award link is incoming. Temporal turbine. It's not a temporal turbine, although he has a lot of those in his inventory. That's always the fear. That's why I always test a link first. Like, oops, did I make it something silly? All right. And if you're watching this recorded, I'll post that link in the summary. Speaking of which, I better write that link down. There we go. So I have it for later. Uh, and that, that's it. We're almost an hour, 50 minutes. Thanks for joining me, Mouse Hunters. Um, if you have any other questions, feedback about the Great Winter Hunt, I'll post a summary in the tavern section. You can leave your feedback there. I'll try as well to answer any questions that come up uh, to the best of my ability. And we'll look for some of these questions as well. Maybe we can make it into news stickers or something like that as well. If there's anything that's kind of needs clarification about the event, help spread the word. Or hunters as well, you can help me spread the word through Facebook groups if somebody's asking questions. Hopefully you're there to provide a friendly answer as well. There's one last question we'll leave off on because I wanted to mention that and I'm surprised nobody brought it up yet. Did you raise the gold points value of mice? Yes, we did. Every single Great Winter Hunt event mouse, all, almost every single one, had their points, their gold, and as well as their, their strengths. How difficult to capture they are. They were all adjusted. I uh, don't like to do that too often, but it was kind of a necessity for this event because it felt really weird if you went through a ski zone and the mice were worth way more gold than when you go through a toy zone. It kind of made you start to be like, well, I hope I get ski orders because the mice are worth more when I do ski orders. Uh, so that felt a little bit weird as well as the catch rates. We kind of want them to feel somewhat consistent as you go through the ski hill and the toy emporium. It should feel, you know, roughly equal, whereas the toy lot, the mice are a little weaker and they're easier to capture in there. Uh, the Snowball Storm as well, the mice you find in there, they've had their power way increased. So even with the School of Sharks and the Minotaur base, I think the Snow Golem, you can't even, it's not 100% guaranteed to capture that mouse. I think it's around 80 or something like that. So uh, you'll definitely have some trouble going through those Snowball Storms. Um, and they'll feel a little more challenging as well. So they had all their reward and their strength values tweaked for the Great Winter Hunt. And there you go, George is saying they've you've already gotten to updating those mice on the wiki. 
So that's good as well. You can, they won't uh, be misaligned. That's part of the reason why I don't like to change the points in gold and stuff of mice too often because it's a little awkward. You know, you get used to them being one way and they're in the wiki or they're in a spreadsheet in a Facebook group somewhere and it's kind of, you know, it just spreads misinformation when you change variables. So we don't like to tweak or change things like that too often, but kind of a necessity for this event because there's so many event mice, it would have felt kind of weird if we didn't. Yeah, and Dennis, that's a good point as well. When we made those mice harder, that those were typically the mice that had their points and their gold increased uh, the most. So I think the snow golem went up quite a bit because now it's much more difficult to capture and well, the king will reward you more for capturing more difficult to capture mice. Whew, I'm out of breath. I think I, I didn't take too many, too many, uh, didn't inhale too much while, while speaking. Well, thank you for joining me, hunters. Um, we'll see you next week. Like I said, I think Jacob's off, so I think you'll have me again next week. And we'll probably do a little preview of the New Year's add-on that's to come and should have a few little teaser images, the 2017 chair, and we can kind of show you what that looks like. And some of the limited edition um, base, limited edition trap is coming for New Year's, so we'll be able to give you a sneak peek at that. Happy hunting, good luck in the great winter hunt.